In this video tutorial, we're going to look at a quick sample of CSS positioning. And we're actually going to reference the slide we've seen before and build a simple layout. The layout we're going to be creating is this simple uh, web layout. And this is a common layout on the web. A lot of blog type of sites use this layout. And now that we understand CSS positioning, we have enough skills in order to be able to lay out this particular um, sample here. So let's jump over to our code and build this layout. We're going to have a header, we're going to have a navigation section, a article or a content section, a sidebar, and a footer. So I'm back here in the HTML and CSS, and I don't have any HTML and I don't have any CSS applied. We'll just build this layout from scratch. So the first thing is to set up our initial blocks that are going to be for our HTML5 tags, or not our HTML5 tags, our, our layout rather. And in this particular example, I'm just going to stick with using div tags for now because we've been using div tags for the last few videos. Once we get into our real world sample, we'll use those HTML5 tags that we learned about in the HTML series. So I'm going to set up several different div tags. So I'm going to call this one div ID equals header. And this will be the div tag for the header. Following the header, I have my navigation div. Following the nav div, I have what I'll just call my content div. Following the content div, I have the sidebar. And following the sidebar, we have our footer. So these are each one of the divs in our HTML page. Now, in order to position all of these elements, I'm going to be using absolute positioning, and they have to have a parent element. So I need to create one more div that's essentially what I call a wrapper tag or a container tag that's apparent to all of these tags. So I'm just going to do another div up here and call it div ID equals, and I'll just call this wrapper. And then all of these tags I'm going to indent over, and then the wrapper will be closed all the way down here. So you can see the wrapper tag is the main parent and all of these divs inside of here are all children of the wrapper and they're all siblings to one another. So that's uh, our HTML structure. And let's jump up and start to flesh out some of the wireframe for the CSS. And I'm gonna start with the wrapper tag. So I'm gonna say pound wrapper. And for the wrapper tag, Let's just make this site, we'll kind of make it a little bit smaller because I'm on a lower resolution for this screen recording. So we'll say width equals 800 pixels. And we'll say height equals, whoops, height we're gonna to set to 600 pixels. And let's give this thing a background color of black. Okay, so we'll just do this much. Let's come in here and save and refresh. And I don't get anything, so there must be an error here. Let's make sure, oh, I see my error. I have not saved my HTML file, so i got to save my HTML and come back and refresh. And there we go. Now I can see that black div it has those dimensions, and that's going to be the wrapper. So even though I can't see all of the divs inside of here, they are, in fact, there. They're, they're in my HTML. So when, now we need to give each of these divs a little bit of dimension so we can see them. So let's start off. And we'll say pound header, that's the next div. And I'm gonna copy all of this HTML because we're gonna be repeating this quite a bit. And this div is gonna have a width of 800, maybe a height of only 100 pixels. And let's just make it red. And we'll save and refresh. And there's my header div. So the next div is below this will be the navigation div. So I'm gonna copy all of this header code and come down here and we'll say width 800 and maybe our navigation's only 50 pixels tall and we'll make this one yellow and save and refresh and I actually forgot to rename it so I need to name this one nav which I believe is the ID name I gave this one yep div ID equals nav double check that save and refresh so here we have the header div and the nav div and the next div over here is going to be our content div so it's the next div in the HTML down here content so we'll do it next I'll just do the same thing. I'll just paste here and switch this to content. For the content div, let's make it 600 pixels wide and we'll make it maybe, let's see, 400 pixels tall and let's make it green. And let's save and come back here and refresh. <clears throat> and there's our content div and that's looking pretty good there. And then the next div we need is the sidebar div and it needs to go over here. So 
we'll kind of scroll down here a little bit and I'll paste again. And this one's going to be sidebar. And it's going to have a width of 200 because 200 plus 600 equals the overall width of 800. So it has to be small enough to fit up inside of this area. So 200, the height will be the same as the content. So it's going to be 400 tall. And we'll make this guy purple. And we'll save and refresh. Now here's where we run into our first issue. Because this is just the natural flow, div tags are block level elements, so they all occupy their own space. So this green div occupies this line, and this sidebar occupies this line. So now we run into where we need to use CSS positioning to alter the natural flow of this particular element and move it up into this slot right here. So what we're going to do on this particular div is we're going to say position absolute and if it's absolutely positioned, remember that's positioned according to the parent element, but only if the parent element has a position itself. Right now, if I look at my CSS, my wrapper does not have a position. So I need to remember to give this wrapper a position, and I'll just assign that relative, as we learned before, in order for this absolute positioning to work. So now that I've assigned that, let's look here and figure out how exactly we need to move this div. So the wrapper tag is this big black one. It goes all the way up and over here. So it needs to come down the height of the header plus the height of the nav. That's how far down from the top it needs to come. So our header div up here is 100 pixels and our nav is 50. So this thing needs to come down top 150 pixels. So we'll do that, save and refresh. And that in fact moves it down. And now it needs to come clear over here. Now that's right on the right edge. So I can simply just say right zero and save and refresh, and that tacks that div exactly up into place. So now that one's positioned correctly. Let's come back over here and do our last div, which is our footer. So I'll paste here, which I have in my clipboard, and call this one footer. And height is going to be 50 here, and the width will be the full width, and let's say background color equals orange. And we'll save that, and refresh, and that footer div naturally falls right here. The reason why it falls right here is because the purple div used to be here, but since I used absolute positioning, the purple div got removed from the document flow, so this orange div occupied its previous spot, which is naturally after the green div. Again, you can kind of think of this if we look at our code. Because I absolutely positioned the sidebar, it's as if it didn't exist, it didn't exist or doesn't exist, rather, and so the footer would naturally follow the content which is there's the content and there's the footer. So that's why that footer div is right there. I'll undo that change because we know it in fact does exist. Just that other div thinks it doesn't. So that's the basics of this CSS layout. So we have our header, our content, we have our, or rather our, our navigation content, sidebar and footer. The last thing we're going to do here is center this entire page. And this is a little bit of a, a CSS trick to center elements. So I can take this wrapper div and by assigning it this code, margin colon zero space auto, and saving and refreshing, that automatically centers the div within the available space. And the handy thing about this is if I resize the browser window, you can see that it always stays in the center of the browser no matter what. And if they go smaller than the width, then you just get the scroll bars, which you'd scroll left and right. And that's how. I would say almost half of the websites on the internet use this trick to center themselves inside of the browser window because when you're designing, you really never know exactly how wide the screen resolution of the particular person using your website. So this is an easy way to make sure that your site always stays in the middle of their window regardless of the size. The reason why this works, the first value here, again, this is CSS shorthand that we learned earlier in this series. The first value refers to the top and bottom margins. So I'm setting top margin to zero, bottom margin to zero. The second value refers to the left and right margins. So here we have left auto and right auto. Now auto basically makes the margins the same. So it tries to make the left margin the same as the right margin. And if you think about that, if the margins are the exact same on the left and the right, then the content has to be in the middle because these two have to equal. And if you resize the browser, if these are always equaling one another, it's always going to center the content. So that's kind of maybe the way you can think of that uh, little trick. But this margin zero auto will center objects in the browser window. Now this only works 
if they have a width declared. If I didn't have a width, the default width is 100%, and you can't center something that's already 100% width. So you have to have a width that's smaller than the available space, and then it will center itself automatically.